Hi sweet friends, welcome back to Mary's Nest. Today I'm beginning my Thanksgiving cooking series. Today I'm sharing how to make an easy, make-ahead bone broth gravy, perfect to top your Thanksgiving turkey. Not only is it delicious, it's good for you too. I generally like to roast two 12-pound turkeys, and each of them takes about three days to defrost in my refrigerator. And what I like to do is, on the very last day, the third day, I like to remove the wrapping, remove the giblets, remove the neck, remove the backside, and then wrap, rewrap the turkey, and uh, put it on a platter, rewrap it with uh, a cellophane and then aluminum foil, and put it back into the refrigerator to keep it cold. And then I have all of the giblets, the necks, and so on and so forth to do with what I want. One, in this case, make the gravy, and two, use the giblets to make the stuffing. That way, both of, both of those things are made the day ahead of time. Now, in getting ready to make the gravy, the first thing that we want to do is make a little bit of turkey bone broth with the necks and the backsides. And we're going to do this by, first of all, chopping this up and getting ready to put it in the little stock pot. Well, I've got these all cut up now, and the other things that we're gonna need is one onion, and I leave the skin on, and just like I do when I'm making any kind of bone broth, and then a couple of stalks of celery with the greens, a couple of carrots chopped up, skins on, two bay leaves, and you know about a teaspoon, it's very flexible, of, or maybe even half a teaspoon or so of uh, peppercorns. Now all we're gonna do is put all of this into the stock pot. And that's it. And then once we get all this in, these are the, the veggies and the peppercorns and the bay leaves, and then we're gonna go and add in our uh, neck and the backside. Just try to get that in there. One, two, three. And then I'm gonna add about a half a cup of uh, white vermouth. You can use white wine or vinegar, whatever you like, just like when you're making any bone broth. I shared with you in the past, I like to use white vermouth because I generally don't have a bottle of white wine around and uh, white vermouth just comes in a bottle with a screw top and so you don't have to worry about it getting any off flavors or anything like that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pour that white vermouth in there. That'll help leach out some of the uh, collagen uh, in the bones, in the neck bones, and then I'm going to go and cover this all with water. And let me see, let me bring you in a little closer, see if you can see how everything looks right there in the stock pot. And you just need a small pot for this one, whoops. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna fill this with water just to cover. Let's see. And yeah, we'll just use that all perfect. And you'll see, just kind of to cover. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to bring this up to a boil, and the minute it comes up to a boil, I'm going to turn it down to low, and I'm going to let it simmer for a few hours. Well, I just took my small batch of turkey bone broth off the uh, stove, and I had planned to let it just simmer for a few hours, maybe three at the most, but as you can see, it's dark outside now, and it actually wound up simmering a lot longer, but all the better. But in any event, before I strain this, uh, if you're new to my channel, I just wanted to say welcome. And if you'd like to be a modern pioneer and learn how to cook from scratch and make home remedies and do all sorts of fun things like that, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. And if you do, be sure to click on the little notification bell below that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. So what I'm going to do now is just strain this out into my measuring cup, trying to leave most of the debris behind. And now I want to mention, do not throw these scraps out that are in the uh, pot here. If you plan on making turkey bone broth, uh, with the carcass and the scraps from your Thanksgiving turkey, just put this in your refrigerator and or your freezer with your other scraps and add this in to the batch that you make, to the bone broth batch that you make um, with the carcass, with the turkey carcass, because there's probably still some nutrition left in this. Now in my saucepan here, I have half a stick of butter, that's four ounces, and I've got four tablespoons of um, all-purpose flour, which, and actually the flour that I use is the Wonder Flour. I think I've talked to you about this before. It comes in a blue box at the supermarket, and it's basically just like an all-purpose flour, but it's really fine milled, and it's 
beautiful for making gravy. So if you see that at your grocery store, be sure to pick up a box. So I've got four tablespoons of that, four tablespoons of the butter, a half a stick. I'm gonna bring this over to my stove, melt it, uh, make the roux, and then we're going to add uh, about four cups of this turkey stock to it and make our gravy. Well, I've got my half a stick of butter melted here, and I think I said before four ounces. I, I meant to say just four tablespoons or two ounces. And then I'm going to now add in my four tablespoons of the all-purpose, or in my case, the Wondra flour. And what we're going to do is we're just going to mix that around, and I'm going to start cooking this to get off the flour taste as well as to brown it a bit. And I'll just keep doing that. And then when we get ready to add uh, the turkey stock, I'll show you that. So I cook the butter and the flour together, making a nice roux here. It'll cook off the flour flavor, plus I let it go a little longer than the typical two minutes, say, if you were making a white sauce, and I let the roux take on some nice, uh, deep, rich uh, color here, a nice golden color that'll just add uh, beautiful color to the uh, final product of the gravy. Alrighty, now my stock over here made about six cups. We're probably just going to need about four. So I'm just going to go ahead and add this in. Oh, listen to that. <laughs> And I'm going to add in about four cups. Let's see where we are. Okay, got a little more to go. Okay. Let's see. Add a little more there. Excellent. Okay, I'm just going to keep stirring this around and I'm going to add a little more gradually as I get these lumps out. <laughs> and then we're going to bring this up to a boil and let it thicken. Well, I've switched to my whisk and I've put in the uh, total of four cups of the turkey stock, the turkey bone broth. And now I'm just going to keep whisking this and bring it up to boil. Uh, to allow it to thicken. Well, it's coming up to a boil. Now I'm just going to add in a teaspoon of salt and continue to whisk this. Make sure that we get it nice and smooth. Well, the gravy came out beautifully. And I just wanted to mention, I only used four cups of my turkey bone broth because I had, the, uh, I had only started with four uh, tablespoons of butter and four tablespoons of the flour. But if you wanted to use all six cups or however many cups of stock you wind up or bone broth you wind up uh, having, uh, you can certainly adjust accordingly. And I tend to like uh, the ratio one, one, one. So one part butter, one part flour to one cup um, or one tablespoon butter, one tablespoon flour to one cup of liquid. And that seems to always work out for a nice smooth gravy. Not too thick. I don't like when they're gloopy, you know, or gloppy. I don't know what the right word would be. Uh, not too watery either. Just the perfect consistency. And one that is great for putting on mashed potatoes and, and on the turkey. And also one that heats up nicely. And now for the piece de resistance. <laughs> I'm going to add in a little bit of cream. This is something, oh, you know what that is? That's beeping and telling me that the um, cornbread dressing is ready. But as I was saying, I'm going to add in some heavy cream here. And this is something I had read in a James Beard cookbook, uh, the famous uh, chef and cookbook author, who always recommended adding a little bit of cream as a finishing touch to your gravy. And I find that it's really, it's just wonderful. This is Oh, maybe about a third of a cup. Uh, you can start with a quarter of a cup, whatever you like. And I'm just going to whisk it right in, and it makes the gravy so beautifully velvety, smooth, and rich, and luscious, and just delicious. Now, before I get ready to decant this, or at least in my case, I make this the day ahead, so I'm just going to go ahead and refrigerate this and then warm it up again tomorrow. And I'm just going to uh, not bring it to a boil. I'm just going to warm it very gently and uh, very slowly just until it's warmed through. 
Let me give this a taste. Mmm. That is so good. <laughs> that is really good. And the seasoning, the one teaspoon of salt is perfect for this amount. And you really uh, taste the, the turkey broth. It's delightful. And adding that little bit of cream just is that next luscious step that makes it truly wonderful. I think you're going to really enjoy this. Well, I'm going to go ahead and refrigerate this. But before I do it, I want to show you what I usually do when it comes to decanting it and bringing it to the Thanksgiving table. I will warm this. This is uh, like a, a pewter. And, and actually, it may be covered in stainless steel and made to look like pewter. I forget exactly what it is. It's not an antique. Uh, it's a, a modern, modern day piece. But uh, it holds the heat beautifully. And what I do is warm it in hot water and then I take my hot gravy and I just go ahead and decant it right in here. And I've got a couple of these and I'll just put them around the table. Uh, I also have a, an insulated uh, gravy um, boat that has like a little, it's not the type you plug in or anything like that, but it's insulated and it uh, has a little uh, top to it that you put on. But I find both of them stay almost equally uh, the same in terms of temperature. Well, there you have it. Some beautiful gravy in a cute little uh, gravy boat. And I'll bring you in a little closer so you can see this uh, up close and see the consistency and the texture. Well, I just wanted to show you up close this wonderful velvety texture. This is just a glorious gravy and I think you're going to really enjoy it and just a beautiful, smooth, luscious texture. If you like this video, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you enjoy learning how to cook from scratch, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel and be sure to click on the little notification bell below that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Thank you for joining me today and I look forward to having you join me again right here in my Texas Hill Country Kitchen. Love and God bless. Before you go, if you like this video, I think you'll enjoy these too. And don't forget, subscribe to my channel, click on the little notification bell, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.